Let's bring another one of the Phantom Thieves from Persona into Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition and build on Takamaki in D&D. When it comes to the race, we could make it easier on ourselves and just be a variant human, but your alter ego is Panther. So we're going to take the race to Baxi. They're a cat-like race and they get some unique features, like Cat's Talent, giving them proficiency in perception and stealth, dark vision so they can see in the dark a little better, Cat's Claws so they can make a slashing attack with their claws, dealing 1d6 plus their strength modifier as slashing damage, and the most notable feature is feline agility, allowing you to move with a burst of speed. So you can double your movement speed until the end of your turn, but once you use this trait, you can't do it again until you spend one turn moving absolutely nowhere. Then when it comes to a background, On does have a job as a model, so we're going to take the background, Entertainer. This gives us skill proficiencies in acrobatics and performance, as well as a tool proficiency with a disguise kit, which would definitely be helpful for the Phantom Thieves. Oh, and by the way, if you want a statistically higher probability of rolling three nat 20s in your next D&D session, you might want to try and hit subscribe because I've heard that it helped. Then when it comes to some starting stats, we're just going to go ahead and min-max it a bit by maxing out our dexterity, constitution, and charisma, bringing them all to 15. That dumps our strength, intelligence, and wisdom down to 8, and then we can add 2 points into one ability and one point into another thanks to our tabaxi race. So we're going to put two points into dexterity bringing it to 17 and one point into charisma bringing it to 60. Then when it comes to a starting class we have plenty of charisma to go around and unlocking your persona in the first place is kind of like making a pact with an otherworldly being. So we're going to take the class warlock. This gives us proficiency in light armor so we can wear that leather jumpsuit. We get access to simple weapons which means we don't have access to that whip yet but don't worry we'll figure that out shortly. Shortly, we get saving throws and wisdom and charisma, and we get to choose two skills. So we're going to go ahead and grab deception, because there are a few times where An has to kind of lie about her true intentions, and then we'll just follow it up with investigation as she tries to figure out a little more about the targets of the Phantom Thieves. Then at first level of Warlock, you get some spell casting, and that spell casting can be a bit more specialized thanks to the otherworldly patron you get to choose, which is basically a subclass for Warlocks, and you get to choose it right at first level. And since An's main abilities revolve around fire-based attacks, there happens to be a warlock patron that's very specialized in fire damage, and that's going to be the Fiend. While you might not think of Carmen or any of the further awakened personas as a Fiend, it does give us an expanded spell list with plenty of fire-based attacks. Like at first level, it gives us Burning Hands. At second level, it gives us Scorching Ray. At third level, it's going to give us the infamous Fireball. And at fourth level, it gives us Fire Shield and Wall of Fire. Then finally, as a fifth level spell it gives us flame strike and not beating around the bush we're gonna go ahead and take pretty much all of those fire based spells and while we're covering some of the spells there's one cantrip we're also gonna grab and it's gonna basically replace An's ability to use what is a submachine gun in the game so we're gonna grab the cantrip eldritch blast it's plenty of blasting with a firearm and as you level up you can fire more and more blasts out of it as if you're essentially using a submachine gun. Then also at first level of Warlock you get Dark One's Blessing. So when you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points you gain temporary hit points equal to your charisma modifier plus your Warlock level. Then at second level of Warlock you get some Eldritch Invocations but we're going to save those for just a second because at third level of Warlock your spell slots upgrade to second level and you get a Pact Boon. And while you do have your Persona helping you out which could lean towards Pact of the Chain, we need to make sure we get access to a whip. So we're going to take Pact of the Blade. This allows you to create a melee weapon in your hand and you're automatically proficient with it. It also counts as magical and we can boost it up with some Eldritch Invocations. We'll start off with Improved Pact Weapon because that gives us a plus one to our whip, which is going to be pretty helpful because whips generally don't do as much damage, but they are finesse weapons so we can use our dexterity and they have reach so you can actually hit something that's 10 feet away. Then the other invocation I would probably grab pretty early is Agonizing Blast. It's going to boost up the power of that submachine gun because it allows you to add your charisma modifier to every single blast that comes out of that Eldritch Blast cantrip. And at fourth level of Warlock you get an ability score improvement so let's go ahead and round out our dexterity and constitution putting one point into each of them. Then at fifth level of Warlock we get another Eldritch invocation so we're going to take Thirsting 
Blazing Blade, allowing you to attack twice with your action, essentially giving you extra attack. Also at this level, your spell slots upgrade from 2nd to 3rd level. And then at 6th level of Warlock, you get another feature from your persona called Dark One's Luck. So when you make an ability check or a saving throw, you can use Dark One's Luck to add a d10 to your roll. You can do so after you see the initial roll, but before any of the actual roll's effects occur. You can only use this feature once per short or long rest. Then at 7th level of Warlock, your spell slots upgrade to 4th level and you get one more Eldritch Invocation. So we're going to take Eldritch Smite. That allows us to boost up the overall damage from the whip. This invocation allows us to spend a spell slot once per turn to boost up the damage of our packed weapon. It deals an extra 1d8 of damage and an extra 1d8 on top of that per level of the spell slot used, bringing you to a possible 68 of extra damage. And on top of that, if the target of the Eldritch Smite is huge or smaller, it's knocked prone. Then at 8th level of Warlock, you get another ability score improvement. So we're going to go ahead and boost up our charisma by two points. Then at ninth level of Warlock, your spell slots upgrade to fifth level and you get one more Eldritch Invocation. So I would take Repelling Blast. That way you can keep creeps away from you and really make use of the reach that your whip has. Then at 10th level of Warlock, you get another feature from your Fiend Patron, aka Carmen, which grants you Fiendish Resilience. So you can choose one damage type when you finish a short or long rest, giving you resistance to that damage type until you choose a different one with this feature. But any damage from magical or silver weapons ignores this resistance. Then at 11th level of Warlock, you get a Mystic Arcanum, which is a special type of Warlock spellcasting. See, the thing about Warlock's pack magic is you have a very limited amount of spell slots, but they are always cast at the max level that a Warlock has access to and those spell slots automatically recharge on a short rest. However, a Mystic Arcanum is a stronger spell, but you can only cast it once per long rest. And with this 6th level Mystic Arcanum, the spell I would definitely grab is Summon Fiend. This would feel like a Persona Awakening to some extent. I was tempted to choose Investiture into Flame instead, but we already have enough fire-based spells and I wanted to get some sort of Awakening in place. Then at 12th level of Warlock, you get another Ability Score improvement. So let's go ahead and max out that Charisma, and you get one more Eldritch Invocation. So we're going to take life drinker now our maxed out charisma is going to help us even with our whip damage because the life drinker allows us to add our charisma modifier to any damage that we deal with our packed weapon so now thanks to a whip being both a finesse weapon and our packed weapon we can add our dexterity modifier and our charisma modifier to the damage then at 13th level of warlock we get access to a 7th level mystic arcanum and for your 7th level mystic arcanum i would probably grab plane shift you can either use this to banish an unwilling creature to another plane immediately taking it out of the fight as if it's an all-out attack or this could be like your showtime since you're essentially bringing them to another plane of existence when you do the weird showtime cinematic thing or you can use plane shift to transport you and willing creatures into another plane of existence as if you're going to the palace in the first place either way Plane Shift just seems like it fits the character. And at 14th level, we get our last little feature from Carmen called Hurl Through Hell. I really wanted to make sure I grabbed this because this makes it so when you hit a creature with an attack, you can use this feature to instantly transport the target to the lower planes. The creature disappears and hurdles through a nightmare landscape. At the end of your next turn, the target returns to the space it previously occupied. And if it's not some sort of fiend, it takes 10d10 psychic damage. The fact that it deals psychic damage feels like you're in the palace of your enemy. And with how this functions, just transporting your enemy to another plane of existence and suddenly dealing a whole bunch of damage, this felt like you either a showtime or an all-out attack from Persona 5. Now that we've gotten the majority of the features that I really wanted to focus on getting, it's time for a multi-class. And when An isn't a phantom thief, she's a model. And I feel like that's going to fit pretty perfectly with a bard. When you multi-class into bard, you get to choose one additional skill. So we'll grab persuasion because that seems pretty fitting with all of our charisma. You get some spell casting. I'll save most of that for the character sheet, but there is one cantrip I would grab because An does have the ability to distract your enemies. And that feels somewhat what fitting for Vicious Mockery, because Vicious Mockery also gives an enemy disadvantage when you use it against them, but it can also tie to the insults that she spits at Ryuji. I'll save the rest of the spellcasting for the character sheet, but also at first level of Bard, you get Bardic Inspiration. It's currently a d6, but the size of that dice does go up as you level up in Bard. You can use Bardic Inspiration a number of times, equal to your Charisma modifier, and you can use this Bardic Inspiration as a bonus action to boost up one ally's roll of an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. 
They can add that dice to any of those rolls within the next 10 minutes after you inspire them. But I think the main people you inspire are Yusuke and Mona, so you might just want to focus it on them. Then at second level of Bard, you get Jack of All Trades. So any ability check that doesn't have your proficiency bonus already added, now you can add half of your proficiency bonus rounded down. Also at second level, you get Song of Rest. So whenever you need to take a break in a safe room and your allies are trying to take a short rest to regain some hit points, they can regain an extra 1d6 hit points thanks to the Song of Rest feature. Then at third level of Bard, you get Expertise. So we're going to grab Expertise in Persuasion and Stealth because you are a Phantom Thief. Also at third level of Bard, you get to choose a Bard subclass, otherwise known as a Bardic College. And since you're a model, we're going to choose the College of Glamour. The first feature you get is Mantle of Inspiration. So now as a bonus action, you can expend one use of your Bardic Inspiration die to grant yourself a wondrous appearance. When you do so, choose a number of creatures you can see and who can see you within 60 feet of you. The number of creatures you can target is equal to your Charisma modifier, and each of them gains five temporary hit points. And when a creature gains these temporary hit points, it can immediately use its reaction to move up to its speed without provoking any opportunity attacks. The number of temporary hit points increases as you level up in this subclass, increasing to 8 at 5th level, 11 at 10th level, and 14 at 15th level. But obviously, we're not going to be getting to those higher ones. The other feature that you get from College of Glamour is enthralling performance. So if you perform for at least one minute, you can attempt to inspire wonder into your audience, really pulling off some incredible modeling poses. You can choose a number of humanoids within 60 feet of you who are watching, up to an amount equal to your charisma modifier, and each target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. If they fail, they're charmed by you. Not only are they charmed, they idolize you. They speak of you glowingly. And anyone who's charmed by you in this way would actively try to stop anybody that opposes you. It would avoid violence unless it's already inclined to fight on your behalf, but that's still a pretty amazing ability if you use it properly. This effect lasts for an hour, or if the target takes any damage, or if you attack it, or if it witnesses you attacking or damaging one of its allies. And even if they manage to resist this with their saving throw, they actually have no idea that you tried to charm it. You can use this feature once per short or long rest. Then at 4th level of Bard, you get another ability score improvement, so we're going to go ahead and max out our dexterity finally. This is going to help our armor class, as well as finally maxing out your abilities with your whip. Then at 5th level of Bard, your Bardic Inspiration upgrades from a d6 to a d8, and you get Font of Inspiration. So now your Bardic Inspiration recharges on a short or long rest, instead of just waiting for a long rest. Then at 6th level of Bard and 20th level overall, you get Counter Charm. So as an action, you can start a performance, and any friendly creatures within 30 feet of you have advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. And lastly at this level, thanks to being a College of Glamour Bard, you get Mantle of Majesty. So you gain the ability to cloak yourself in Fey Magic. And as a bonus action, you can cast Command without expending a spell slot. You take on an appearance of unearthly beauty for one minute or until your concentration ends, because this does require concentration. During that time, you can cast command as a bonus action on each of your turns without expending a spell slot. Any creature charmed by you automatically fails its saving throw against the command you cast with this feature. And you can only use this feature once per long rest. That brings us all the way to 20th level. I covered most of the spells already, but if you want the full spell list, feel free to check out my Patreon where I have access to the character sheet for all of my builds. And I have some pretty awesome patrons overall, especially my player character patrons. Johnny Dyer, Kevin Shirley, Zephros, that funny man 57, John Joshua Maynard, CGC 2014, Afstorm, Elisa Martinez, Panda Milkshake, Ted C, Andrew Nobles, Carcat Kitsune, Decker Joint, Z13, Viral Nerevar, Daniel Galvin, and the Dino 21. Then going above and beyond that are my Dungeon Master level patrons I played D&D with. Shane Gilroy, Conman ZX, Cyber Society, Talon Starkey, Demiurge, Eric Wade, Salvador, Devin Happy, and Kilo Kilo. Then of course, I'm never going to forget my god tier level patron, Gamestake. He helped me more than I ever expected, so a special thank you to him. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here helping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to play as Panther, aka On, from Persona 5, possibly even making a full party of Phantom Thieves in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition.